Plastics can be super useful, but some of the properties that make them helpful in our day-to-day -day lives, like their indestructibility, also make them a potential problem because they just never go away. Today, in collaboration with Merck KGAA Darmstadt, Germany, I want to talk about microplastics, what they are, where they are, and how we can try and keep them out of the environment. When we use the word plastic, we're typically talking about this kind of stuff. Plastics are composed of chains of molecules called polymers. Polymers can be found in nature in things like cellulose in plants, but they can also be synthetic in things like PVC. Their long chain structure makes them malleable and strong, which makes them super useful. If you look around you right now, I would bet that you can probably count 10 different things made out of plastic. They've really become ubiquitous in our modern world, and sometimes that's for good reason. Being able to make cheap, sturdy medical equipment out of plastic is awesome. Having keyboard keys is pretty great. Plastics can be found in bicycle helmets and televisions and cell phones and building material. But because it's so cheap and easy to make stuff out of plastic, it started to find its way into our lives in ways that probably aren't necessary. Like the takeout place really did not have to add an entire handful of plastic utensils to my order when I have plenty of forks at home. And the thing about plastic is that it takes a really long time to break down and go away. While plastics can break down into smaller pieces when exposed to things like heat, light, or pressure, it can take tens to hundreds of years for something like a plastic bag or a plastic water bottle to break down and fully decompose, depending on exactly what kind of plastic it's made out of. And while you can probably see some of these long-lasting bits of debris on a walk through your neighborhood, smaller pieces called microplastics are beginning to pop up in our waterways, our homes, and even our air. So. What are microplastics? They're tiny bits of plastic that range between 100 nanometers to one micrometer small. Some microplastics are primary microplastics, meaning that they were manufactured to be that small, like those tiny plastic beads that used to show up in body wash. There are also secondary microplastics, which are the result of a larger chunk of plastic breaking down. And microplastics are small and easily moved around, so many of them wind up in our waterways. This can happen from larger plastic litter in something like a river breaking down over time, or it can happen by traveling from our homes out into the water supply. And some of these fibers can be removed by wastewater treatment plants, which is great, but many of them are too small, and this all depends on the size and type of filter each individual plant is using. Even a small amount percentage-wise of microplastics leaving the plants can result in a large amount of total microplastics ending up in the ocean. Merck KGAA Darmstadt Germany's new Microplastics.me film shows the life of a microplastic shed from a toothbrush fiber as it travels from a sink through waterways into the ocean and then back onto a diner's plate. But toothbrush fibers and plastic beads aren't the only kinds of microplastics that start off in our homes up to 60% of microplastics found in fresh water may actually be from our laundry. But how big of a problem is this? Like, should we really care about tiny pieces of plastic floating around in the ocean? They're tiny. Well, there's a lot of active research looking into this that has already found evidence of microplastic ingestion in over 150 species of fish, both in fresh and salt water. This plastic can end up clogging their GI tract, which can cause blockages or even starvation if the fish thinks that it's full but isn't actually getting any nutrition from all those plastic pieces. Some studies have also shown in a laboratory setting that fine microplastic particles can migrate to the liver and the gills of the fish where they can cause inflammation and damage. And the large surface area of microplastics means that they can absorb chemicals and heavy metals from the water that can then be transferred to the fish. So fish are eating these plastics, but what about us? It's estimated that humans consume between 39 to 52,000 microplastic particles per year, depending on your lifestyle. And we inhale even more from the air around us, which is wild. The microplastics.me website lets you take a quiz about your lifestyle to get an estimate of how many microplastic particles you are taking in each year. Do you eat a lot of shellfish? They're big reservoirs of microplastics, along with normal fish. Microplastics have even been found in commercial salt, sugar, and honey. And we're not really sure yet what kind of health risks these could pose to us in the long term. Your body likely disposes of over 90% of ingested microplastics through your poop. But 
What about the other 10%? Some research suggests that they may be able to pass through our intestinal membranes and travel to other parts of the body, and that they might go on to cause inflammation and other kinds of cellular or immune stress. But it is still an emerging field of study. Okay, so microplastics are in the water, and they could be harmful to both you and fish. But how many of them are we each releasing into the world every time we head to the laundromat? Take a quick peek at your clothing labels. Maybe you've got a bunch of clothing that's made out of natural fibers, like cotton or wool. Or maybe you've got clothing made from things like nylon, rayon, or polyester. These are all manufactured fibers. Some, like viscose or rayon, are actually derived from natural polymers and fibers like cellulose. Others, like nylon, acrylic, and polyester, are synthetic fibers that are made up of plastic polymers. These are plastics. You're pretty much wearing plastic. And these fibers can be really useful to make fabrics with stretch or fabrics that are breathable and also fabrics that are cheap and affordable. But when you wash them, small fibers can break off and enter the waterways as microplastic pollution. Just think of how many fibers are left over in your dryer lint collector at the end of a run. Some of those same kinds of fibers are breaking off in your washing machine too. For many of us, completely transforming our wardrobes into all natural fibers or materials that won't shed these kinds of plastics just isn't realistic or economically feasible to ask of a lot of people. I've really been trying to take material into consideration when I buy clothing for the past couple of years, both because of its environmental considerations of where those fabrics came from and where they're gonna end up, but also because I wanna be trying to buy things that will last longer and fit into my wardrobe and lifestyle better so that I'll have to buy fewer items of clothing overall. But I still have plenty of fabrics in my closet that could be contributing to microplastic pollution through my laundry. I'm already someone who tries to make my clothing last longer by washing a lot of it on gentle cycles and rewearing things multiple times between washes and hang drying, but I still worry about how much plastic is leaving through my washing machine. But there are ways that I can try and prevent this. So I could install a filter that's specifically designed to remove these microplastics from the wastewater, but they are really expensive, and I'm also renting this apartment, so that's kind of off the table. Another option is things that can go into your washer to prevent those microplastics from leaving. There are companies that sell balls that claim to capture these fibers in the wash water, and also some companies that sell bags that you can wash your plastic and synthetic fabrics in to trap these fibers. And there's even some new awesome research coming out about using sound waves to try and focus and then remove fibers from your laundry wastewater, which is so cool. Uh, and I've linked an article about that down below, but it is not a consumer option. So I went with the bag option. Unfortunately, I don't have a great setup here that would allow me to do a controlled test of the microplastic waste that would leave my washer from identical loads of laundry washed with and without this bag. So I am not going to review or recommend it because I would only want to do that if I had the numbers to back it up and my washing machine is just not set up for that. But I do want to try it. Oh, it's bigger than I thought. Hello and welcome to my washing machine. This isn't weird at all. So I've separated this load of laundry into two piles, one that is all cotton and one, some of them are cotton and polyester blends, and then this sweater is all acrylic, which is sad because I love this sweater. So I'm gonna take the cotton stuff and put it straight in, uh, but I am going to take all of these uh, potential microplastic polluters and put them into this bag. So there are maybe some tiny fibers here in some of the seams. Again, it's hard to know without some sort of controlled test exactly how much this is really helping. And in the face of all of the plastic pollution in the world, this feels like a very small step. Hopefully, you know, it'll make me feel a little bit better about both wearing and washing some of my favorite clothing while also being conscious about the impact that my wardrobe has. You can learn more about microplastics in the world around you by visiting Merck KGAA Darmstadt Germany's microplastics.me page in the description box below. I was genuinely surprised by just how many microplastics I am estimated to be taking in and shedding each year. And you can take the quiz yourself to find out what your own estimated microplastics impact could be. 
As always, remember to go forth and do science.